Next on News Talk AM 1480 WLEA, the newsmaker show with Kevin Doran. It's Brian O'Neill in for Kevin Doran on today with Buffalo businessman and former candidate for governor, Republican Carl Palladino. Carl, thanks for coming on. Uh, you're welcome, Brian. Carl Palladino wanted to get your thoughts on these stories about how at the New York City Police Academy graduation, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio was booed by some of the audience. This follows news that hundreds of uh, New York City police officers turned their backs on de Blasio at the officer Rafael Ramos funeral on Saturday. Your take first off on the booing of some of the audience against de Blasio at the Monday graduation. That's what makes it a great country. You're free to do as you feel. Uh, De Blasio made his own choices. In doing so, uh, some people became very aggravated with him uh, and felt that he was not acting properly as a leader. People have lost respect for him. I mean, it's one one thing to for a leader <clears throat> to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes, but it's another for a leader to continue to deny his mistakes and not apologize to the people. What he did in creating uh, an attitude in New York City about uh, stopping the stop and frisk, uh, stopping the police department from uh, stopping individuals to uh, when they were sort of micromanaging their, their responsibilities, when he stopped that, he upset a lot of people. He also said to many of the criminal types that, hey, uh, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Why would he do something like that as a leader? Why, why would he put the people of the city of New York in, in harm's way uh, by, by, by just making one small statement, or what he probably thought was a small statement, and, and one little reach out, if you want to call it, to a minority group? Why, why would he do that? Where's his sense? Obviously, he doesn't have any. Obviously, he was ill-prepared for this kind of responsibility. And obviously, he was elected by an apathetic uh, electorate in New York because I think less people voted then than they have in the last uh, 25 or 30 years. And Schneiderman making his remarks that he's going to be the new deputy sheriff. Uh, and, and they're politicians, and they're there, and they're scatterbrained, and, and they... They don't have the courage to really prepare themselves for the responsibility that they're taking up. Uh, that's, that's sad. You know, this is a pretty intense situation for New York City police. It's just being reported that nine New York City cops went into a restaurant and then left because they were offended. This apparently happened December 16th, and the restaurant uh, just apologized for it on Monday. I guess what happened when you read the online accounts, one of the restaurant employees put their put his hands up in the air when he saw the officers walk into the restaurant. The hands up in the air... Thing. That's a reference to the Michael Brown Ferguson. It's called the uh, situation. It's called the hands up, don't shoot gesture. Your take on that story from New York City, Carl? Well, I, I, I didn't see the write up on it, but obviously, uh, you know, the police they they have to say see you later to their to their wife and their kids when they leave home in the morning, and and they're going out there and putting themselves, especially with that uniform on, they're putting themselves in harm's way. In their minds, and, you know, we, all policemen aren't, you know, great minds of the Western world. They're just like every other Joe. Uh, you know, they, they think and they react and they have emotion and they have feelings. And they especially have feelings about their responsibilities, both at work and at home. Those two guys that got killed... Those two, those two innocent policemen, they, they left some families somewhere. I remember watching that Oriano fellow's uh, mom cry. It was just, it was just so, so sad. You know, he's there now and he's, he's gone. And uh, uh, you know, for, for people to make light of it, uh, people to be insulting to them, not that they're any special class of people. 
but to be insulting, to go out of your way to insult, don't shoot. Well, I would walk out too. Former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani, he's been speaking out, Carl, like you have, against Al Sharpton. I saw this man help cause riots in New York. I've heard his anti-police invective firsthand. To have a man who hasn't paid $4 million in taxes, have a man who's spent his career helping to create riots, phony sto stories about police, to have that man sitting next to you uh, speaks volumes. You know, actions speak louder than words. You put Al Sharpton next to you, you just told everyone, I'm against the police. Giuliani there on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday. Carl Palladino, your thoughts there? Al Sharpton, <clears throat> he again made his own choices in life. He chose to go out there and to fabricate and concoct and exaggerate situations. And he was caught time and again in his lies, in his betrayals, in his, in his exaggerations. He was caught. The press caught him. So therefore, he was marginalized in the minds of, of the American people. And then this onerous president of ours invites the man to come to his home, the home of the American people, the White House. It's reported that, uh, it's reported that he was there 85 times. That Al, Al Sharpton was in, in the White House. He invited him to come for private dinners and consultations. He consulted with him. My God, that's showing such a disrespect for the American people and so he's showing such a disrespect for the African-American community because he is not the revered leader that he makes himself out to be. He's not revered by anybody. He is no Martin Luther King. Al Sharpton is a criminal. He spent years with Jesse Jackson extorting the largest corporations in America, threatening uh, racial violence against them and, and boycotting against them if they didn't give money to him and, and, uh, and his buddies and his cronies. And everybody knew that. And here, the President of the United States, the Governor of New York, the Mayor of, of New York City, the Attorney General of New, York, of, of New York State invites him and says, I'll give you an office in my office. Come on. Where's the respect for the American people? Letting a bum like that go out there and throw gasoline on a terrible situation that occurred. And that's all he did was he threw gasoline on it. He's a vindictive, sick individual. And he should be in a home someplace. Donald Trump says that to end the problems between New York City Hall and the NYPD, that Merritt Bill de Blasio needs to apologize to the police. I said that earlier. There's a man that he just is unable to bring himself to an apology. He was wrong. If he didn't know he was wrong, well, then he would be totally incompetent. But I don't think he's totally incompetent. I think he's, he's knowing enough that... He purposely has done some of these things to be affronting, to show that he can move the pendulum to the left and that he, okay, can, can make those decisions that those screaming L. Sharptons and their cronies, okay, scream for, and that he can, he can make things happen for them. Why? Why? Why would a, a man who assumes responsibility for 10 million people, their lives, their businesses, how can he possibly imagine that that would be acceptable behavior? And he did it. And then he comes out with a stupid statement saying that he had to warn his kid about the, buff, or about the New York, uh, New York uh, City Police Department. How wrong is that? What a bad illustration for your kid. The New York Post is reporting that police in New York City are now taking longer amounts of time to respond to complaints about petty crimes. They say in the Post that's largely because they have to have two police cars now responding to calls because of the uh, December 20th assassination of the two officers in Brooklyn. And that that's uh, really slowing things down to have to send two cars to everything. Any thoughts there, Carl? 
that's uh, that's policemen being cautious because of a situation that this mayor and Al Sharpton types and Cuomo and Schneiderman types because of a situation that they created. The policemen have a right to be cautious, and they have a right to do a job action of that nature. I mean, that's not being unreasonable. I think it's totally reasonable. They're doing their jobs. They're just going to do them at a slower pace where they can be more cautious about having somebody come up and put some bullets into their heads while sitting on the street. Just terrible. The New York Daily News says Mayor de Blasio is getting very unpopular with the Republicans in the state legislature and that the uh, Democrat lawmakers want de Blasio to lay low in 2015. Wondering, do you think de Blasio can win New York City again? No. The people will come out. Uh, the people who should have came out and vo- voted for Lotus uh, uh, the, the last time, uh, they're regretting it right now. They're regretting what's happened to their city. Their city is now in a decline. It was in, it was in a it was in a, a nice had nice momentum moving up and becoming a very safe city, becoming a city that that people could rely upon. Whether you're going to go there for for entertainment or or for business or to live there, but now they're in a they're they're in a a death cycle into the abyss. They're circling the drain. We're talking with Buffalo businessman, former candidate for governor Carl Palladino. More in just a moment. Back on the Newsmaker Show, Brian O'Neill in for Kevin Doran. This morning's guest is Carl Palladino. Carl, on Albany politics, the New York Post reports that some Democrat state lawmakers are considering boycotting Governor Andrew Cuomo's inauguration speech at the state capitol because... Cuomo blocked the state legislature from getting pay raises. What do you think of that, Carl? Well, I, I would boycott him, uh, you know, for a more legitimate reason. That would be, you know, the denial of an economic opportunity to millions of people in the state of New York when he when he denied uh, uh, he denied people the the ability to frack. He denied our fracking industry. I wanted to ask you more about that. What, what did you think when that decision came out? Be an issue like that, it shows you how far afield our legislative delegations are. They just don't get it. You know, they they want to pick up the paycheck, but they don't want to perform for them. They don't want to. They they don't want to do the the hard work to run the what is it now the fourth largest state in in the union. Uh, they they don't want to do that hard work. They don't want to stand up to a. a a, a dictator, uh, a, a self, a self-loving, narcissistic tyrant named Cuomo, who has the almighty gall to tell New York State that it can't participate with the other 36 states that drill. He can't participate with them because there's some some fear by some very liberal, uh, out of sorts health director and and uh, and I'm sure he instructed them on what to do. He says he had no part of it. That's baloney. What he's doing is appealing nationally to the environmental movement to to uh so he, to uh, so as to uh uh enhance his his viability for the presidency or the vice presidency. That's all he's doing because he's all about himself and he's all about politics. So I don't know why anybody would go to his inauguration anyway? You know, it's, it's just it's sick the crowning the crowning of a man who has so little regard for the people that he's that that he's responsible for and they voted for him again they keep putting him in office they like him it's sort of a sickness i just don't get it just uh, it'll, it'll never flow right for me since the fracking ban the governor seems to be changing his mind a little bit about allowing a possible casino on the other side of the southern tier. The governor has indicated that he thinks casinos would be a great thing for any town. What do you think of that theory that casinos are the way to go? Because he's an elitist. Elitists have a problem. The problem is that they're successful people and they have guilt. That's what Andrew Cuomo has. His his money, the money that's been shifted to his father, uh, the, the the deals that they made with Hal Burton and the 
and the uh, Oneida Indians and the Seneca Indians, uh, the payoffs, all that stuff, <clears throat> all that stuff adds up to one thing. Andrew Cuomo has a warped view about how you pay the bills for the social services programs that we have in New York State, which are the most expensive in the nation. His, his view on paying those bills is to take money and sap it out of the poorest people. They're the ones that go to the casinos. Rich people don't go to the casinos. The casinos are full of one-armed bandits that ding, 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 uh, hypnotizes the people. They go back in there. They lose their, their monthly check, okay, and the money just gets recirculated. Instead of giving us fracking, which would have brought new dollars into the state, all he's doing by putting up more casinos is hurting the lower classes, hurting those people that, that are suffering and trying to find a place for themselves. And so they turn to this magic that they call a casino. That is the worst thing that he could have done to raise money for the state budget. And, that, and for him to make a stupid statement that these casinos benefit the, uh, the local communities, is that what you want your kid to do, be a casino dealer? Is that the type of vocation you want him to have? Would it be better if he was a welder making welder's wages instead of a minimum wage as a dealer in a casino? On the safe back, do you think that the Republicans in the Senate in the coming uh, legislative session will be able to do anything about, well, maybe undoing parts of the safe act, if not an entire repeal of the safe act? No, they won't do anything because they're they're gutless and they're uh, they lack the, insti- the intestinal fortitude to, to face up with this governor. They're what we call rhinos, Republicans in name only. You watched them during the election. They didn't support Astorino. They supported Cuomo because they like the feeding frenzy at the public trough. That's what they live for. Carl, we've not spoken with you since the November elections. What, were, what did you think of the cuomo Astorino race? I, I, I mean, I think Astorino was sort of was sort of foolish to to think that that he could raise money and get that kind of name recognition statewide. Uh, he he, he was uh, he spent probably ninety percent of his time trying to raise money. If he had listened to what we had put together for him, he would have he would have bought it. But but it was Ed Cox's Ed Cox's the state Republican chair. It was Ed Cox's. Uh, uh, will, because he wanted, Ed Cox wanted to show the establishment people in Washington that he could control this election. And, and it was his will and his relationships with guys like Dean Skelos and Libus and Maziars uh, that brought about the, uh, uh, the candidacy of Astorino. I was the guy that personally took the proposal to Astorino that Trump, Donald Trump, would run for governor. Donald Trump, he was sort of oblivious to the, to, the, to the responsibilities of running for governor, but he certainly would have beat Cuomo. He had the 50 or $60 million it would have taken to beat Cuomo. And then he would have been primed for himself to be running for uh, higher office at, uh, for the presidency, which is something that was on his mind. But instead of, uh, instead of, looking at that as an opportunity where Astorino would take the lieutenant governorship and after about a year you'd have you'd have uh, uh, Trump moving on to the national politics and and Astorino would be the governor of the state and we would have had everything straightened out Astorino would have probably been running the government from day one and we would be in a, we would be in a mode to straighten things out in this state and once and for all return the state to the will of the people but that was too much for Ed Cox. You see, when your leadership comes out of Manhattan, and it's a leadership that is engrossed with themselves, and, they, and they're thinking that they are smarter than everybody else, then, then you get this kind of result. Ed Cox has failed now in, in, in uh, three, three major statewide elections. It's time for him to go, and it's time for, this, it's time for the local county chairs, in many cases, for them to go. Uh, either that or, uh, you know, how's the old saying go, lead, follow, or get out of the way. And that's uh, that's something that I think that day is coming very soon. So. 
Carl, when you talk about the uh, problem of county Republicans, all I can say is there, as a reporter, I went up to the uh, Donald Trump speech, and I forget the name of the the, uh, restaurant that it was held in. It was in Depew, uh, New York. uh, And I remember I was standing with a bunch of reporters, and we were uh, up on a balcony, and uh, you and Donald Trump and the others were uh, down at the podium. And the disrespect showed by what appeared to be a bunch of uh, county Republican officials. I don't know what county they were from, but they were all standing at the bar. And as people do when they drink, they talk louder and louder and louder. And Trump was talking, and they could have cared less. So when you say that the Republican Party needs to do some uh, house cleaning there, I can fully agree. Well, the Republican Party has to be reborn because... Now, I, I mean, I look back at this last election, and I think the, the factor that never showed up at the polls were Republicans. I, they, the Republicans in upstate New York could not sensitize or identify themselves with the Astorino campaign. We were hoping that they would at least identify themselves with the, with, with the other two offices, one being the, uh, uh, the controller's race and the other being the, the state attorney general's race. But... Uh, uh, <clears throat> they couldn't engage on any of them, and they stayed home. Uh, they stayed home because their county leaders and their their county legislative leaders, or their state legislative leaders, uh, were not were not marshalling them to get out to the polls. Uh, they did nothing. They didn't lift a finger to help. In many cases, obviously, uh, Tom Dady in uh, Syracuse and uh, and and. Uh, uh, Nick Langworthy here in Buffalo, uh, they did their they did their best and they really reached out and they knew what was going to be good. It's just it became a it became a question of money, and that was so difficult. You look down in your area, down in the in in Broome and uh, Shimon counties. You look at this blind this blind affinity for uh, Tom Libus. Tom Libus has been a traitor to his people from day one. Tom Libus did not say a word an effective word, when he actually had some leverage, when they were giving up on the SAFE Act, when they were, I mean, obviously Tom, Tom Libus didn't vote for the SAFE Act, but, but he supported those who did vote for the SAFE Act, and he encouraged them, because that's the game of politics. It's called the Albany Two-Step. But Tom Libus had every opportunity to get a chip back from Cuomo, and he didn't do it. And that chip was for fracking, and he didn't do it, and Maziars didn't do it. They're Cretans. They were living off the fat of the land. Now, hopefully, Maziars are going to go to jail. Hopefully, they send them up to Canton, New York. I mean, I think it's nice up there in the hills and nice and chilly outside, but, but the, the, the guards up there are much our people, and it'd be nice to see them go up there. And, uh, and... <laughs> Carl Falladino, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Any final thoughts before we go? Uh, peace on earth and goodwill to men. You said it. Carl Palladino, the Buffalo businessman and former candidate for governor, thank you very much for joining us today. All right, Brian. Bye-bye.